Hey, you thing. Look I'm doing good. How you doing? You just glowing? <laughs> yes, you. she is. Thank you. Beautiful. Hey, now they said I had sugar in my tank. I wish the women's here. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Come on, you know, I just tell you, oh, come on. he got sugar in the tank. No. Yeah, don't, don't pay them no attention. No, you're I'm just not booty crazy. You yeah. know, you're just not booty crazy. You're just not overly sexual. You know, which exactly that's a refreshing uh, 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 environment to be in is a man that's not always overly sexual, and that's an actual teacher, somebody that I can learn from without him staring at my breast or <laughs> somebody that's gawking all over me, and you know, just being real. Uh, perverted, you know, perversion can be a turn off. You know, I like intelligence more than somebody always trying to look up and talk under my clothes, right? And I've always, I've always been that way. Plus, for me, I was raised around a lot of women, you know, my mother's, yeah. and I always, I always find women more smart and more intelligent than men, yeah. Uh, <laughs> The women in my family, I saw them. Uh, Sister Nova, do you have your YouTube on? Here's some back graph there. Okay. Yeah, it's gone. See, now it's back. Hold on for a minute. Okay. Is it okay? Okay, well, yeah, I don't hear it. Yeah, it's okay. No, it's still there. Oh, it's the refrigerator. Okay. I don't have any other windows up. All right, we cool. We can work with it. It's that refrigerator. Is oh, okay. Behind but, uh, Yeah, it's a... Uh, I was raised a while around women, and I found growing up, growing up around my mother, auntie, I saw the women making moves. They were more just more intelligent than the men were. And since I was raised, I was the only boy always about around a lot of females. Mm -hmm. I just like that environment. It was just yeah. cool with me. And in my life, even to this day, it seems as though women always come to my rescue. You know, very few few men is always uh, women that come to to help me out. You know, when I really need it, I don't get a lot of help from a lot of men. So, and I guess that's probably because I am anti a lot of the things that they do because they. Want to sit around and, and and brag about how many folks they don't slept with and you know fake manhood garbage. I'm, not into that. I'm just not into that. If you a man and you married, I'm not gonna let you come around me and talk about how you cheating on your wife. That's not gonna happen. Now other guys, oh man, you a player? You doing no? Not with me. You married that woman? You took an oath? You stay loyal to her? If you didn't want to be married, then you can marry. I'm not gonna let you talk, and I'm not gonna let talk men talk about how they abuse women, how they get over. It. I don't, I don't play that. Yeah. And so a lot of men just don't. And also, a lot of men don't like me because, well, I'm concerned you're not a man. How the hell are you a man laying up with this pepperwood in this country, and he dominates you for over 400 pounds? And you a man? A man of what? <laughs> you don't have no laws these suckers obey, no policies. They, you just here. So how I'm gonna respect? How can I respect myself as a man? I'm gonna call myself a man, and this sucker can blow my brains out and get away with it every day. He's still trying to be accepted like a child, and that's why a lot of people date outside their race. They never accepted themselves, and they're still accepting. They want acceptance from their their masters. Yeah, I can hear that echo in the background. That's that's part of that slave mentality, that slave conditioning. They talked about it a lot in um. Two of the African humanity classes that I attend in college, and um, I know that's just a fraction of what you know is the truth. However, that started me on my journey to learning why people don't accept themselves, and they accept everybody but themselves. And even to this day, I still see people going way out their way to. Make sure their children are lighter in complexion. Making sure their hair is a certain kind of texture because that's socially more acceptable. This is why 
I have always been the black sheep because the majority of my family is Christian. Uh -huh. I'm the only one woman enough to say, that's bullshit. Jesus never worked for me. I, yeah. pray, I, I prayed for Jesus to work for me. Right. Please be real. As much money I put in that basket, mm -hmm. no more, I hope that that was the truth. I was praying that that was the truth. Mm -hmm. But I could not help but understand after letting Christianity go, my life literally got better. I became more in control of my life instead of delegating it to my slave master because to me everything that got to do with christianity was part of my you know the slave mentality so i don't really want no parts of it and when i stop delegating and start taking responsibility for my life i begin to blossom mentally emotionally when i started taking responsibility instead of relying on prayer warriors and Holy mm -hmm. oil. And I'm going to give y'all a little short story. Whoa. I went to a nun convent because I was told that I needed demons cast out of me because of the way I live and because I was never a conformer, was considered a sinful person. But as I analyzed myself, I've, I've always been a person that questioned everything. I even want to know what's in these sunflower seeds I'm eating. I don't care what it is. I want to know where it comes from. And because of me challenging my elders in my family, I have been shunned right now by 60 and 70 year old members in my family want nothing to do with me because I'm a free thinking woman that want to know what have Jesus done for us? Jesus never stopped none of my homies from getting killed. Jesus right. never stopped me from getting a broken heart. Jesus never stopped any or healed me from any illness or sickness I've ever had. The only thing that's ever helped me in any shape, form or fashion was myself. Hmm was myself or it or it went away naturally it definitely wasn't jesus i said it's either one or two things it's either he don't like me or he ain't for me and he don't exist they go for god and all that yeah it's one or the other and i said you know my i'm rolling when he don't exist it's a fairy tale just as much as the tooth fairy yeah. and just as much as all that paganism you know that mythology that you know, people is being exploited on. It's a money thing. And once I learned the truth about, uh, you know, Christmas, Christmas was a big one. When I learned the truth about it and when I learned the origins of it, my family told me I was abusing my kids by not celebrating it. And my philosophy was if you take care of your children all year, you don't have to spend your rent money for the month of December. So I go big for birthdays more than anything. Christmas, I might spend I might spend a hundred dollars on just the fact that I want to get some after Christmas cleaning supplies, you know, and catch that sale. But I'm not gonna go broke for somebody that never gave a damn about me or my people. That man never cared about nobody. Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of that deprogramming started with me watching a lot of your videos. And um, I am going to start going sure? on. Are you sure? Absolutely. Because I needed supportive information. Yeah. Remember, I just, you know, um, I just opened my mind up with the African Humanities class. But as I began to watch those videos starting back in 2008 and nine, even before I even ever spoken to you, uh -huh. I began to understand you're not crazy. Because mind you, people in my family was calling me mentally insane because I don't want to accept your Jesus. And I'm just like, well, see that he don't like dark skinned women, he don't like me. It's something about me he don't like, he doesn't work for me. 
everybody, and, and, and I didn't see them work in their life. Everybody that I seen go to church, they died poor. Mm -hmm. The church never showed up in their life, you know, and, and I'm really upset about that because my grandmother spent a lot of money in a church that couldn't even be there for her once she began to ail. I was very upset about that. She had a a, um, a bed sword the size of my fist. Now, mm. this church that she's been going to for 40 years, when I would show up from Las Vegas, Nevada, they couldn't even come and visit her, Sister Noble. Y'all couldn't come visit her? She spent 40 years paying for building funds. She done mm. been a part of everything, motherboard, all this. And now she's Ellie. She can't even get a visit. You know, and that, that enraged me. And that just showed me that it was about the money. And then when I would challenge the pastor and I would ask him, if you know that these holidays derive from paganism, why is you allowing the church to practice it? And he said, because the majority, the majority rules and I don't want to lose my members. So it was a business agreement. It had nothing to do with whether it was true or false. Anybody that studied theology know that that's all trash and garbage and made up fairy tales and all of that. But they still allow it to be taught in church because they like the lifestyle that they live and they're only for themselves. They're not there for the truth. So why should I go to church and give you my money when I know you're sitting up there lying in that pulpit? And then you're going through divorces yourself and you're making excuses talking about I'm human, but uh, what was his name? Uh, the pastor of, um, I can't think of the church, but he had a baby outside the marriage and they said, oh, well, he's human. Well, if he don't have no self-control not to have a baby, he probably shouldn't be teaching other people. Mm -hmm. And everybody got mad at me. My cousin got mad at me because that was, and he's a he's on the little pastor show, the little preacher show. Uh uh, what's his name? Noel Noel Jones. That's his name, Noel Jones. Mm -hmm. He had a baby outside the marriage and he got divorced. What's godly about him to where he should have members the way he do? You know, and once I saw that, he's no better than me. I wouldn't want that filthy man touching me. <laughs> he's filthy. His his energy is filthy. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll do better laying hands on myself than to let a filthy adulteress touch me. You know, he don't even have self-control of himself. So how could he pray for me? <laughs> so a lot, I've been shunned because I refuse to accept Jesus Christ. And a last point I'm going to make is the people that are Christians and the people that talk all this stuff about how I'm going to go to hell <laughs> were physically, emotionally, and mentally abusive to me. Now, my mom, she considers herself an evangelist, but you never raised none of your children. You were physically, emotionally, and mentally abusive. And the only thing you ever cared about in life was a penis. And you still won't talk to none of your children because two years ago, your penis passed away. So she <laughs> is dominated by a man's penis. This mm -hmm. woman literally is going through uh, rectal cancer and colon mm -hmm. cancer right now. And she's ready to just lay down and die because the only thing defines her is a penis. So mm -hmm. why would I want to be a follower of a religion that haven't even taught you how to walk in your own brand of dignity. Sister Noble, she walks in her own brand of dignity. She's not branded by some label. Uh -huh. I love and respect people that walk in their own brand of dignity. You're walking in your own brand of dignity, the reality temple. I'm a free thinker. I'm not bound by nobody's rules, games, or logic. I'm thinking for myself in 2020. This woman is still thinking Jesus is going to bless her. This is the third husband that's died on this woman. And she still don't understand that she needs to learn how to love herself. And Jesus is not interested in being there for her at all. Because if he was, he would have blessed her with a husband that would still keep living instead of passing away on her. 
So she's just believing a fairy tale. She's stuck, mm -hmm. you know, and, and even though she's 60, one thing I wanted you to touch on is just because you're older, that don't mean you know more. That's and right. there's a lot of docile older people that's leading our youth down the wrong path. Yes. If our generation don't wake up the way you and Sister Noble is, we're going to be really in trouble. Yeah. Mm. Big time. It's time to get busy. It's time to get active. And you're going to sit here and pray. While you're praying about it, you're going to get your behind what? Because somebody is going to tell you, we might be having a race war. And I don't got time. To, uh, matter of fact, my stomach too big to be getting on my knees to pray to anybody. I'm trying to get me a pistol and get my guns together so when they get the kicking in those, I'm finna air it out. Because it's gonna get to that point, you know, because the, the racism is not gonna leave anytime soon. Absolutely. And while you're on your knees praying, I'm gonna be over here protecting my family, period. Right. And that's what my mindset is, protecting my family. So what's your thoughts and views on what I spoke on? Well, you know, I have a few things to say about my pastor at my former church. I can tell you that she is a very lovely, wonderful person. Mm -hmm. She really is. I mean, this woman will go above and beyond to help you in any way. And and mm -hmm. and I'm speaking I'm speaking from personal experience when I say this because I know people she has given money to for rent, to help with their rent when they lost their job. I know people she has helped put up in, in an apartment. You know, um, I just know things. She, but she's been deceived like a lot of us have when it comes to this organized religion called Christianity, Judaism, you know, right. and... Yeah. The lies that I was taught growing up, it, it, it didn't help me in my in my life. It didn't help me navigate through this system of racism and white supremacy. It didn't help me in my personal life. It didn't help me when it came to these jobs. I lost I lost jobs, you know, right. um, dealing right. with dealing with assholes on the job, um, right. <laughs> you know, stuff right. like that. It, I didn't get no extra brownie points just for being right. a Christian. Right. My mama didn't get no extra brownie points just for being a Christian. And I right. told you via Facebook that she died in 2017 from uterine cancer. Mm -hmm. I got a cabinet full of herbs. I can show you. I, I don't want y'all to think I'm lying. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just going to pull out some of these herbs. They've been up there since before my mama died. I'm just going to pull out some of them. OK, I just want to show y'all because I was the one I was the one that took this woman to get the herbs. She was an wow. avid herbalist. When I say an avid herbalist, I mean an avid her herbalist because we was right. taught at my former church about herbs, right? Okay. We was taught how uh, they give you nutritional value and how mm -hmm. they will stop um, certain diseases and stuff like that. It's mm -hmm. bullshit, okay? It's bullshit. I just want y'all to know it. Okay, I'm just going to show y'all. Yeah, I'm thinking about Dr. Sebi and the video you did about Dr. Sebi. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to show you all You see all this bullshit up here? You see all this right here? Wow. All this don't stop cancer cells. All this right here? Oh, Y'all wow. see that right there? Y'all see that right there? Hold on, hold on, hold on. All of this, uh-uh. Wow. It, wow. it don't stop blood pressure. They lying to y'all, okay? It don't stop blood pressure, okay? They lying to y'all. It don't stop. Well, I definitely stand corrected. Yeah, she uh, must be on her side uh, having technical difficulties. And hold on, hold on. Look, look, another box of blood pressure. Wow. I, I, just, I, I just didn't want y'all to think I was bullshitting y'all. Echinacea. Oh. See that right now? Echinacea. <laughs> she got all I know, I know I'm being comical right now. Okay. This shit don't stop no damn colon cancers, okay? Oh, oh, wow. That don't stop no colon cancer, okay? Oh, wow. Uh, look, look, another box of smooth move. See? <laughs> See, I thought I was I bet y'all got all the She's still going back for some more. 
Hawthorne Berries. I, I see. I ain't want y'all to. I ain't want y'all to I'm never mind me. Hawthorne Berries. Now, this oh, is all God. the stuff my mama took over the years. She still died from uterine cancer in 2017. She still had diabetes. Okay, she was still diabetical. She was still suffering, and also I found out in 20. Wow. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm downstairs. It was September 14th, right? Mm -hmm. The next day I found out she had a heart attack, right? Mm -hmm. September 14th, 2017. The next day, on the 15th, I found out she had a heart attack. And guess what? The arteries surrounding her heart had already been damaged. Wow. I found that out. This woman been having light heart attacks, didn't even know. That's oh, what see that's what I'm trying to tell y'all. She been having light heart attacks and didn't even know. None of this shit works. None of it. None what was her it. diet? What was her diet for the record? What her diet, diet, her diet was regular, like like a lot of us. Is. You know, we eat a lot of um, bad foods. So we eat fried foods a lot. But she also ate a lot of baked foods. She also ate a lot of vegetables also. Okay. I mean, she would eat fried foods, but she also ate a lot of vegetables and baked foods. And she, you know, she had her share, her, her share of junk food, you know. Okay. Wow. You know, so. <laughs> yeah, so I, I ain't want y'all to think I was just bullshitting y'all. I'm not I, I still, I'm I still got I'm more herbs food. up in the cabinet. In fact, Okay. And that's why I said what I said to you. I had to respond when you when you sent that message to Talik. I had to respond to that because I knew, I knew it wasn't real. Doctor mm -hmm. Seth even lying to our asses. He lied. <laughs> he lied because black folks still dying from diabetes, heart disease, stroke, cancer, all kinds of cancer, all kinds yeah. of cancer. So, you know, it, it's this American diet combined with pharmaceutical drugs, combined right. with living in an in industrialized society, combined right. with uh, breathing poisoned air, we right. bathe and, and, and drink poisoned water, lead-based water, yeah. breathing poisoned air every day. They, sp they spraying chemtrails all in the air over us every day. Yeah, I, I was watching videos about that. You're right. You know, um, so <laughs> I, I'm a little comical. I like to be comical sometimes, you know, just to, you know, bring some laughter to people. Because, you know, these are some tough times. Yeah, people, we need to be able to laugh because oh, yeah. if, we don't, if we don't laugh sometimes, we'll, we'll be depressed. We'll be depressed right, most right. of the time because, you know, this is a depressing environment that we live in over here right. in this country. And they got the audacity, the unmitigated gall not to give people universal health care. I mean, crazy. first of all, you feeding us all this poisoned food. You're mm -hmm. purposely making us sick. Mm -hmm. You're purposely turning people into drug addicts in this country. There are more opioid deaths than there are people dying from crack and heroin combined. Let me repeat. There are more opioid deaths. I hope I'm pronouncing that word right. Opioids, you know, when it comes to deaths okay, right? from opioids, there are more of those than there are people dying from crack, cocaine, and heroin. They are purposely making us sick. And then got the nerve to Excuse not- Excuse me. Can, can, I'm having technical difficulties on my end. Are You guys see, see me all right? I, I see yeah, you. I, I hear you. you. I hear you. You didn't go out. I see you and Terry back there. <laughs> you didn't go out now. Now time. Not while having, I was talking. I'm having difficulties on my end. Everybody yeah. Now. Yeah, yeah. You didn't go out now one time while I was oh, talking. I, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's on we your end. I knew it wasn't on my end. end. I knew. The, I knew the technical difficulties was not on my end. So it's technical difficulties on my. End. It's yeah. It went out for some reason. Yeah, yeah. Why don't everybody? Go back out and come back in and see if it'll straighten up on my end. Yeah. Okay. Go out? Okay. Okay, how do you go out? 
I'll take you out. Okay. Let's see if it. I can hear you loud and clear. You hear me? Okay. Hear she. I can hear her loud and clear too. Okay, I'm good now. I'm good. This feels messing up on my end, but I guess I'm. I don't know what the deal is. Uh, my Facebook is doing good. Oh, somebody said there is an echo when you speak, Angel. There's an echo when you speak. Yeah, it That's is. what somebody said. There's an echo when you speak, Angel. Huh? Somebody said there is an echo when you speak, Angel. Yeah, you said it's your refrigerator. No, no, it's it's the noise. It, it you know, it ain't that loud. You know, it's not a loud noise coming from my refrigerator, but I can hear it 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 going. You know what I mean? I can hear the freezer on, so yeah. Okay, yeah, his microphone is not on. Yeah, I just set my mic back on. Oh. Okay. Can you hear me, though? I can hear okay. everybody. Okay, okay. It's still having trouble on my end. I can't... It's, it's not bad like it was, but it's still messed up. Uh, okay, go ahead, Sister Nova, where you left off. Yeah, so, you know, like I was saying, you know, we live in some very trying times people need to be able to laugh just to yeah. keep from being depressed you know we got a nation full of drug addicts and alcoholics that's another that's another problem that's that that will break down your immune system also that'll yeah. break down your immune system you need a healthy immune system to be able to fight off certain diseases you know bacteria that enter your body yeah, yeah. and you know you smoking weed how is that helping you you drinking alcohol that that's not helping you it's breaking down your body. It's breaking down your system. You know, right, right. it's a slow death. Basically, it's a slow. It's a slow death. Okay, so you know, I feel like this country being black over here in this country is stressful enough. Being black over here is stressful enough, and stress they don't kills. Want us in Africa either, though. No. <laughs> Say what? They don't want us in Africa. I talked to about 40 different Nigerians and they more Christian than my mama is. Furthermore, <laughs> they want nothing to do with they, they want nothing to do with the American black people over here. They don't acknowledge us as sisters and brothers of theirs, nor do they consider us any type of ancestors related related. Yeah, exactly. Anything like exactly. that. Exactly. So I don't. I have the same energy they have. Say so what? I have the same energy that they have, and yeah. as much as possible, you know, because to me they're more of um, hustlers anyway. You know, from what I see, they're trying to scam a lot of uh, people out of money, and um, I find myself blocking them off of my Facebook constantly. Okay. Let me see how I can get this off of. So I could see your face while you're talking. Um, but yeah, um, they're more African. They they more Christian than us. They don't even like us. Oh, I so know. I know. I don't, I don't care about what they're talking about. No, what I was saying was when I said it's just it's stressful enough being black in this country. I was like talking about how stress kills black people. Stress yeah. kills black people. It, it really does in droves. Okay. And because it causes all kinds of illnesses and diseases. Stress can cause cancer. I don't know whether you know that, but stress can actually cause cancer cells to grow in your body. Just stress by itself. Okay. And so what? Stress is, um, I recently had a baby nine months ago. Mm -hmm. Now I'm 42. I've never in my life experienced cluster migraine headaches until after I met this individual. <laughs> That's why I'm staying far from these penises. <laughs> after being in this relationship for a specific amount of time, 
I begin to develop toxic relationships will cause health issues as well. The migraine instantly begin to become manageable once I ended the relationship. Imagine that. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. And that's that a energy, true story. That energy for him. <laughs> you felt they that haven't helped completely, <laughs> but I was having cluster migraines that was so bad that I was literally being brought to my knees and I was in a fetal position in tears bloodshot red eyes you know and i even just only had a glass of orange juice they were saying oh anything could trigger it a glass of orange juice a, a, a piece of chocolate anything would trigger these migraines but when i let the toxicity go that managed you know my migraines when i let christianity go my digestive system improved seriously yeah. When I let Christianity go, my mental health improved. When yeah. I let Christian people go, my mental health yeah. and stress reduced. You can't get it all the way gone, but you can get it down a lot, you know. And when I started thinking positive and, you know, because I'm a free thinking person and I, I believe in thinking positive and realistic to a certain degree. And I manifest a lot of things that I want for myself just by channeling my energy into positivity. And a lot of stuff I have, even today, I've been telling myself, I don't care what nobody say, pandemic or not, you're going to get your Section 8 voucher. Today, literally, I got a call from my housing navigator saying that I'm going to receive a date to pick up my voucher. Mm. When everybody around me been telling me, Oh, girl, it's a pandemic. Section 8 closed. You're never going to get that voucher. Section 8 is closed to further notice. Check the website. Regardless of what the, the outside people been telling me, I never lost the faith. I never lost hope in myself. I know that I didn't leave Las Vegas to come to California to leave empty-handed. I came here for Section 8, and I'm going to get my Section 8. Uh. And, you know, it's just, it's power in the words that you speak and it's power in the words that you think. And in a situation of deteriorating health, because we cannot avoid death and we cannot avoid, you know, being sick. But what I can tell you is I've been able to manifest better health by telling myself you are okay. These migraines is not as bad as what people is trying to make them out to be. It can be maintained. It will get better. Because if I tell myself it's all hopeless, the migraines are going to increase and I'm going to be miserable with my life. And they're very painful. These migraines, I would rather give birth every day than to have a migraine headache. One migraine headache a week. That's how bad these are. Cluster migraines behind the eye. And they bring you to your knee. Mm -hmm. and nothing Did you go does. see about it? Did you go to the doctor and see about it? Due to the pandemic, I can't bring my daughter to, uh, to see the neurologist. So just me and my positive thinking is what's maintaining this. And even changing my diet, drinking more water, even though I do herbs and all of that stuff, but even just drinking more water, period, has helped my body out a lot. And even just exercising has helped me to reduce stress so that it's not bringing on constant migraine headaches because it was getting all bad for me, especially the beginning of the year when I first had this baby and didn't know how to manage at all. Wow. Wow. Man, that's crazy. That is crazy, sis. Yeah, and even in, and even in the middle of the night, what within this week, I done already had two attacks that lasted 48 hours. Period. And oh I still goodness. have to cook, clean, do laundry. I still have to manage, I still have to do everything. So, you know, if I sit up there with a hopeless mentality, and they give me medication for this, mm. but guess what? The medication that they give me, I have it up here. 
The medication that they giving me is called, oh, I don't even know how to pronounce it, but um, it causes liver failure. Oh, so no. I'm scared to take this stuff. Oh, no. I wouldn't take that either. But guess what? <laughs> These migraine attacks are so bad. This is why I have to think positive. I have to tell my, because I know Jesus ain't going to do it. <laughs> you know, Jesus, no, Jesus ain't gonna Jesus ain't gonna come see about you. I, I know that for a fact. Man, oh. this stuff right here causes <laughs> liver failure. So it's like you can't win from losing. So it doesn't hurt me to drink a well-balanced tea and reframe from alcohol use so that I can detox my body out so that I don't have sugar in my body. That also triggers migraine because everything triggers migraine. Baked food, fried food, chocolate, everything, juice, everything triggers these migraines. Stress, mm -hmm. everything. So I told all my everybody that I had a relationship with, you don't, I don't want your child support. Don't contact me. That's the best support you can give me. Because it'll stop me from having the migraine headaches. No, you don't have to worry about babysitting. I don't want your help. Just stay away because the migraines have decreased since people are not around me right now. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> well, I do know this. We hear these stories about these, our gurus, like Dr. Sebi and Lalo Africa, and the list goes on and on. And they teach, you know, Elijah Muhammad taught, you know, eat one meal a day. You know, we hear all these fantastical things. Mm -hmm. And the teachers of these diets, you see, most of them are, are we lost, look, two this year. Most of them. <laughs> <laughs> Your most you know, and, I, and Lalo Africa, the four family haven't even said what he, he passed from. Mm. And this is my experience, because see, time, time reveals certain things. Right. And the teachings of Elijah Muhammad, this is not to say that that what Lalo Africa or Dr. Sebi or Elijah Muhammad, this is not to say that a lot of things they did not teach is not beneficial. I'm not saying that at all. But we looking too much into something because mm -hmm. just like Sister Noble said, we live in a poison climate. Mm -hmm. And I don't care what you do, your mm -hmm. air, I mean, these are the foundations of life. the air and the food you breathe itself is poison, is radiated. Right. <laughs> How can you, you cannot avoid all the exercise you do, everything that you do, you can't, you're not going to avoid that. Right. All these things, the organic plants that you come up, they are in poison soil now. Right. I watched a video on that. Yeah, the soil is not good. The air is not good. Right. How you cannot avoid that? Right. Eat one meal a day. And this is another thing you can't avoid. You're not going to avoid death. Not at all. <laughs> Once you start crossing a, a certain line, that's the countdown to the end. Hmm. <laughs> it is the countdown to the end. I'm on the countdown to the end. You know, if I have another 20 years left, that's cool. But once you cross a certain line, first you was coming up, you go up, now it's time for you to come down. Mm -hmm. And you can have, you can be healthy. There's nothing wrong with being healthy all the way to the end of your life. Right. You getting ready to go. And <laughs> when they put you in the coffin, you're going to be looking pretty good. Oh, he looked nice and healthy, but he did. <laughs> you know? Will be a good looking court. You're only, you're only designed to live for a certain period of time, like anything else on this planet. They have time right. limits, right? You know, and you're not going to avoid that. Uh, the, the world's oldest person in, a, in this, I think, lives in this country. I think she's 115 years old. A sister, mm. <laughs> look at her shape, she's not in good shape. Right. And for me, that's not even life. I, you know, I'm 115 years old, but I, I'm I'm in a wheelchair. I'm half stiff. You know, that's not life either. <laughs> you know, but when, you know, it's your time to go. We go up, like 
Even in the scriptures, the, the Bible talks about, talk about a blade of grass. If it comes up, then it withereth away. You're not going to, you're not going to avoid that. And that's one of the reasons why people love religion, because really in religious teaching, it keeps us, it puts us, it makes us immortal. Because right. you don't die. You know, the flesh. Right. The flesh died. But see, you keep going on and you don't go to heaven or to the moon or wherever, because you got this spirit that's going to fly around. How does this spirit operate? Because I know the flesh, you need to you need to eat and, and, and take a poop and all this stuff in order to survive. Now, this spirit, technically, it's alive. Mm -hmm. How is it functioning? How does it function? Is it getting its energy from the sun or uh, metal photosynthesis? I mean, it's, it's technically, it's still, it's a, it's a lie. We've been lied to. Is this cartoon? That, that's, that's, it's just that simple. We've been lied to. Yeah. Because yeah. see, as a Christian, I was looking for, I was looking, I was looking for Jesus, um, you know, to come and save me. I was looking, I was looking, I was also looking forward to the afterlife. I was looking yeah. forward to going to heaven after I die. I was looking forward to seeing my mama, my mama again, you know, yeah. in the other life. Mm -hmm. And and come to find out, there is no evidence that there is a heavenly place in the, like, according to the Bible, there is no evidence, no evidence. Nobody has come back from the dead. And I mean, come back from the dead, like my mama, after three years, come back from the dead and said, you know what? I seen Jesus. It's real, right. girl. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. And Did she freeze up? Yes, yeah, she froze here. up. It's oh, here. She... I'm here. It's bullshit. When yeah. people claim that people died on the... still be alive because your brain is still... Your, your brain is still functional. Mm -hmm. right. Even if your heart start breathing, even if your heart stopped beating, your brain is still functional. You're still alive. Yes. Mm -hmm. People will tell you, well, you know, they brought me back from the dead. I died on the operating table. No, 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 no. No, you did not die. No. Okay. It's just that your heart stopped breathing. It stopped right. beating. That's all. Mm -hmm. That's all. And they was able to revive your heart. They was able to revive your heart, you mm -hmm. know, and get it beating again. But your brain, your brain activity was still there. Mm -hmm. Right. You are technically, you are dead when that brain stops functioning. That's when you're dead. Not when your heart stops beating. Okay. Right. And people need to know the difference, you know. I, you know, you know. I learned a lot from Talik. Uh, Talik taught me. A, he taught me a lot of things in 2019. Cause, honey, I was, woo, I was still a Christian up until early 2019. I was still in the church, and he would tell you I was in the church, yes. depressed, yes. having suicidal thoughts. Yes. yes. And you know, I was like looking for Jesus for real. I was looking for Jesus to come and, and, and like do something in my life. Like I need some help right now, Lord. I mean, I prayed and prayed, and this was in early 2019, all throughout 2018. You know, obviously, I was grieving my mom's passing. You know, and I really needed some help, financial help as well as you know, just help. You know, in my mental state. You know what I mean? I needed Jesus to come and, and see about me, but <laughs> Jesus ain't real, so he can't come see about me, okay? He couldn't come see about me because he ain't real. It's not real. No. Jesus never existed historically. Jesus yeah. in the Bible is only an allegory for the sun. That's you in. That's it. Christianity is nothing but modern day sun worship. That's all Christianity yeah, yeah, yeah. is. That's it. Modern day sun worship. <laughs> you know, it's not real. None of it is real. The Bible, most of the Bible is based on astro theology. Right. Okay. Which is, it, it's a belief in the observation and study of the stars and the zodiac. That's what astro theology is. It's, it's a belief in the observation and study of the stars and the zodiac. Like mm -hmm. when they say the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of heaven in the Bible, that's referring to the signs of the Zodiac. Right. Mm -hmm. Even even the 12 uh, 
tribes of Israel. That that is also referring to the signs of the zodiacs. Most of the Bible is is really astrotheology. Yep, that's what it is. Yes, it is. They take the stories as literal stories, and there's nothing literal about those stories that you read in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. That whole that whole New Testament is based on fiction. Okay. Straight fiction. It's based on straight fiction. Yes. I got a question for you. Sorry to interrupt you. Uh-huh. I just want you to uh while it was still on my mind, I wanted to ask you, have you or Talik ever asked yourself who's really qualified to go to the afterlife? Mm. Who's really qualified ever to go to heaven? Because even when I look at my grandparents, they wasn't no saints either. Uh-huh. They all lived an imperfect life. They did not necessarily marry before losing their virginity. They broke their own rules to their own Bible. And so I even asked my grandma, who's really qualified to go to heaven? Because nobody waited until they got married to have sex or anything like that. Have anybody ever asked, have you guys ever asked yourself that question too? Or Actually, um, I have. I have asked myself that question. We talked about this. So, yeah, we did. I I did ask myself that question. And I I also questioned a lot of these folks that claim that they're going to heaven. You know, (laughs) I questioned that as well, because a lot of these folks that claim they're going to heaven after they die are going straight to hell if there is a hell. Okay. And no, I said, I'm just being honest with you. (laughs) Because most of these folks ain't worth a damn. Most of these Christians are such assholes. Most of them are. They're such assholes and they're bullies. You know, I worked with a Christian bully. I worked with a a Christian on the job who, you know, she played gospel music every single day while she was there, but she was such an asshole toward me the whole time. She bullied me the whole time I was there at that store. You know, I'm no longer there, but she, whoo, she was, whoo, she was a headache. Yeah. She was a a headache. Yes. My ex-husband... My ex-husband had a child outside the marriage. Yeah. Out of all the names in the world, the woman named the child Messiah. Now, I have a son named Josiah. The woman that had the baby by my ex-husband named her child Messiah. Now, being that they consider themselves Christians, that's like the ultimate disrespectful name she could have ever picked out of the entire name that's in the Bible. Messiah. Yes. That's the worst name she could have ever picked. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. I, I just felt you. like that was the most disrespectful name. And then for him to turn around and tell me, um, if you don't forgive, you're going to go to hell. I said, according to your Bible, I thought you were stoned to death if you committed adultery, though. I'm oh, like, no, they stoned just the women. They stoned just the women to death, not the men. Um, well, uh, like I said, you know, they always rationalize. They feel no one ever takes responsibility from T.D. Jake to all of those Benny Hinn, all of those preachers. They always have a justified reason for their adulterous affair. Yeah, you don't even have self control. How can you feel like you're qualified to be a leader or a teacher? You know, you you don't you don't even have no sense of um control. Yeah. You know, you don't know how to control yourself. I know how to refrain from things that's good for me. That's not good for me. You know, yeah. or that's a, that's gonna be an embarrassment to me. You can't even do that, and you the one that's in a a, 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 a higher state of religion. I don't know. It's just it's just crazy the way they are. But I, I do want to apologize to you and I do want to let you know that I do stand corrected and I thank you for informing me and helping me to save a lot of money that I was going to waste on earth 
<laughs> yeah. Because I'm telling you now, she spent thousands of dollars on these herbs. I can tell you that. I can tell you that for a fact. My mama spent thousands upon thousands of dollars on herbs. I mean, over the over the years now, she been... I, I think my mama started taking herbs back back in the 1990s. Wow. She started... Yeah, she started I think she started time. taking herbs back in the 1990s. Hmm. And I used to always take her to the herb store downtown Atlanta. And I took her to another another place on Highway 85 up in Riverdale, Georgia, all the time to get her herbs. You know, because, you know, she had to have her herbs. I took the herbs with her, you know what I mean? Thinking, oh, these herbs are going to help me. You know, these herbs, I mean... Do you think they preserved her life? Did they clean her body out? Did I they mean, the them? smooth move was good. I mean... That was good. The smooth move, you know. Uh -huh. It cleans out your colon system. That's good. Right. Right. But it does not It does not prevent colon cancer. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It cleans out your colon system, though. It's real good for that's that. It's hereditary in my family. It doesn't, it doesn't prevent colon cancer. And right. this right here, this high blood pressure, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't prevent heart disease. I can tell you that. Right. It doesn't prevent blood pressure, your blood pressure from going up. I'm sorry. It doesn't prevent your blood pressure from going up. Um, although it helps a little bit, you know. It just Right. But it definitely doesn't extend or preserve life. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't. No, it does not. Thank you, you for enlightening so yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't waste all your money on that stuff because, honey, when it's time to go, it's time to go. When it's yeah. time to go. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at. Ain't at, nobody at, at, no the, the ones that they haven't, they haven't, they haven't, they didn't live long. I mean, Elijah Muhammad, one meal a day. Uh, I don't even think he made 80 years old. You got Dr. Lelo Africa and Sebi, all these people. You know, they, you know, they're gone. And people still say, Dr. Sebi said this, Dr. Sebi dead. They don't have to be so dead now. They can, apparently didn't do them no too much of a good. No, <laughs> this is not to say, this is not to say that the things that they talked about is not beneficial. But right, right. this environment that we live in is, is, is your foundation itself. You know, you get me uh, get these herbs. These herbs are being grown in poison soil. You are, you know, we think about cars. Cars are throwing gas in the in the atmosphere every day. Right. And you love your car and your buses and getting around. Mm -hmm. Jet planes. These things are poisoning your air every day. You right. water every day. All cars and all these things is putting oil. You know, every time you get water and it rains. And that water mm -hmm. goes into the earth. It's taking that some of that oil from the cars and trucks is put on the on the asphalt and going into the soil, which eventually end up in the river, where you go out. Now these systems, these systems that they have, they are designed to take out certain intoxicants, but not all these incredible poisons. You know, right. just thing so that when you drink the water, you won't die quick. But it's it's there, and people. People are taking these uh, drugs and they're putting them down in the toilet. That these drugs are ending up in the in the system. These, some yeah. of these active drugs, and you wonder why some of these folks are crazy. I don't care how you purify. I don't care what you do. Your best water is distilled water. But if you mm -hmm. distill it, you take all the nutrition out of the water, and now you got another problem. It's all messed up. The only thing that we can do is we're gonna have to change the world. And yeah. start flipping, flipping things back to, 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 to a natural way of type life. Right. You cannot continue in this civilized society the way that it is and think that you're going to live because this civilized society, Western society that they've created, is meant for you to die. Mm -hmm. And we stay sick. Right. That's the physically sick and mentally sick. Right. Sick. Not going to win. And our God. All these guys that we have have never done nothing for us. Come here. You know, I'm just, Come right here. 
I was so desperate when I was locked up. Because when I got locked up, I was a believer in God. When she woke up. That's me. Yeah. What up, Mia? Say she hi. See you every day. Didn't you just have some kind of family reunion? You had a lot of folks that you was hanging around. Yeah, I, I try my best to um get everybody together, you know, try to come to the beach and come yeah. around, you know, because life is short. Yeah. We're really in the middle of a pandemic. You know, and I've thought a lot about my own mortalities mm -hmm. just based off these migraine headaches. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I even just recently told my daughters, uh, make sure you have two short playing at my funeral. <laughs> no <gamble. laughs> Too short. <laughs> that is Too my guy. That's my era. That's what I want. That's what's gonna be in my will. Uh -huh. I, uh, you know, because you just you just never know. You know, and it's everybody time to go exactly when it's that time. There is no specific time. I don't think I would even want to necessarily live to be really, really older. I just want to see. Come here, mama. I really want to just see this girl able to stand on her own two feet uh -huh. and, and take care of herself. And I'm good to go. Because a lot of people don't work the hell out of me, and I'm tired of I'm tired of them anyway. <laughs> so um, that's just really my main my main goal is to make sure that my my little baby's straight. But I got five grown kids, so you know, um, I'm just getting stuff prepared because I know, you know, the medication that they try to give me is no good for me. Mm -hmm. No good for me. At all. Where's that bottle at? She has a bottle in here somewhere. But I believe everything y'all said, y'all are absolutely correct. And it's no herb you can take to prevent. Oh, there's a bottle right here. It's not going to prevent. It's not going to prevent the major illnesses. No. Yeah. And diseases. It's not. None of it. None of it. I know one thing help is being single though. <laughs> I feel myself getting more healthier the, the longer I stay single. I'm being honest. Oh you know, my goodness. To get in a relationship because that stuff deteriorates you faster. Oh my goodness. So, I'm serious. That's why I haven't even pressured nobody about being with their kids or none of that. Uh -huh. it's pro this is prolonging my life more than he even knows. Staying away. <laughs> yes, it's uh we live in a very stressful environment and uh -huh. and, and we are the descendants of, of we're the descendants of stress. You know yeah. our whole DNA is stressful. Carrying it from our ancestors from you know the slavery period. They, they, that's all they lived. It was a common thing. It's part of us, you know, the stress thing. That's a long time. And so, you know, I would like to put us in a position to begin turning all this around. Yeah. And I don't want to exchange one slave master, this cracker slave master. For <laughs> I'm not into that either. When you listen to some of these people, especially this whole blackity black stuff, they ain't no damn better than the Peckerwood. Oh, it might be worse. So I don't want to follow that anyway. I want to be put in an environment, whether I'm right or wrong, this is my life. Don't give me your laws and your policies and all this. <laughs> I want to be able to do this for myself, right or wrong. It don't make no difference. Because this yeah. is my life. I want to control it for a change. We, were, we keep allowing others to tell us what we need to do and how to live and all that. I don't want your crap. You live yours, I'm going to do mine, right or wrong. <laughs> mine for a change. Tired of being a slave to somebody. 
Negro slave, a white slave, an Asian slave. I don't want to be a slave at all. I would rather be dead. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather yeah. be dead. Keep being somebody's slave because that's not you. Only thing you're doing is doing, I'm a follower of the honor of Elijah Muhammad. You need to take somebody else telling you how to think, what to do, what to eat, whatever. You are a robot. You are a zombie. <laughs> I follow Jesus. I follow. I follow. But you're not yourself. And they try to copy the image. Now, it's nothing wrong with a leader. But when you try to be that person, you're not that person. Right. So you got people that follow the honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan. They try to cut their hair like him. They try to cut their hair like him and talk like him, walk like him. You're not him and you're never going to be him. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> and, and let, let, me, let me say this about life. Hold on one second. Let me get, hold on. I'm going to make her a bottle real, real, real quick. Okay. Hold on, mama. I'm going to put her show on for her. But, um, we had a we had a how was your door getting ready to set it? Just getting ready to yeah, set it. What are you gonna say? Yeah, I was getting ready to say in this life, we are born alone and we will die alone. This journey is just for us. You love yeah. your mother, you love your father, your children, whatever, but this whole journey is our own. Yeah. You know, it's not, you, you're not going to change. Even if all of us died in the same car accident, we did not die together. You died your death, I died my death. Everybody separated. Right. And that's just how life is. And you didn't know nothing about all this mess before we came here. You're not going to know anything when we leave. The way I look at it, things just go dark and they just go back to nothing. When I was laying on the surgery table, whether I woke up or not, I didn't care. That's just how I go. <laughs> at, least, at least I would have died peacefully on the surgery table. Go out here and get shot, carjacked, Negro trying to carjack my car. Get shot. At least I've been on the surgery table and just went out easy, you know, peaceful. And I didn't have to worry about being sick and in pain for, for, for months and days and years. You know, Michael Jackson didn't want to get old because he didn't want to go through rheumatism and getting sick and, and all like that. He dreaded it. Right. So for many people, it's, it's sad because of his talent. A lot of people miss Michael. Michael didn't want to get old. Anyway, mm -hmm. it was really was a blessing for him. And I think Prince was the same way. They didn't want to get old like that. They didn't want to get 80 and 90 and all those stuff and go through what old people do because no, let me tell you something. I don't care how beautiful a lot of these people are as far as their health is concerned. You still 50. You still 60. Oh, yeah. I'm 70. I look 50. Yeah, but you still 70. <laughs> you still 70. Right. <laughs> you ain't. Yeah, you know, that's the main thing. You think that you're doing. You still. And I'm very sure. <laughs> you have an ailment because there's a lot of things. As you get older, you start losing your sight. You can't move the way they used to. I mean, that's just what happened. There's nothing that we can do about it. Right. Now, here, here's one of my subscribers. Been, been with me ever since 2009, 2008 or whatever. That's my, that's a, uh, one of my white friends, Snow Dad. Hi, Snow Dad. Yeah. Been around me. He's been around me, listening to me for, for years, ever since 2009 or early. Mm -hmm. Because he can accept truth. He can accept reality. Right. And that's all it takes. That has nothing to do with skin color. Has nothing to do yeah. with garbage <laughs> that, that we all into. It's just being able to accept the reality and the truth of things is actually if we accept the reality thing, we can change all this for everybody. Do you think all the Caucasian people want to live this way? Do you think they they want to die from, from drug overdoses and alcoholism and free blue there? But see, somebody got to stand up, motivate the people, get us together right. so we can change all this around. Right. Because, yeah, you got a lot of money, 
being a, a millionaire, you still gonna die from from all these different things and get sick or whatever. So what is your money? And these rich people commit suicide and all this different things. Because money is not the answer to us. We are beyond money. We are the most intelligent life form on this planet. We should be beyond oh, yeah. all material garbage. But you got a few suckers on the top and they keep you in this damn pit. And they keep us fighting against one another over nonsense. And we can't get out. Oh, you black, you white, you an Indian, you this, you don't keep us, you rich, you poor. You know, anything that you a woman, I'm a man. Anything they can find that keep us divided, fighting amongst one another, and we still stuck up in this foolishness. Mm. And a lot of Caucasian people understand that, but some of them want to be slick because they still want to. They still want to rule over somebody. Yeah. I'm just not ruling over me. You had your damn time. You need to back up and support the victim. And we can come up together. You're not gonna be ruling me. You've been ruling me all this time. And where have you gotten me? Right. You act like you can't follow the lead of a black man, a soul brother. See, they still have that mentality. I'm the slave master. You're not my master at all. I'm gonna make it with or without you. I don't need you. Roll out. I have to look out for my own. And that's the soul brothers and sisters, the descendants of slaves, born in America, with melanated skin. That's who I need. Because nobody looking out for us, you gonna have to look out for each other. That's why I'm not into the African thing either. Africans don't do a damn thing for us. At all. When have they ever? They don't even speak on the issue. They don't even talk about it. <laughs> yeah, they don't, they don't tell you like that. Uh-uh. They don't do nothing for us like that. When, when during the the, the 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 civil rights movement, what was Africa saying? What was Africa saying? Africa came to them for itself. We over the ass look. Africa uh -huh. is basically uh -huh. is basically Europeanized and it's slowly turning Asian. They even make they are even making kings and queens. They're making Europeans kings and queens over there and Asians now. They wow. speak French. They speak French and Portuguese. There is no, out of all the nations, there's no uh, language that's African. The national languages is European or something else. Wow. Why do you want me to go back to Africa when Africa is European? And then when these Negroes do go to Africa, they're not going to the Africa that's, that, that still has a little bit of that tradition and, and whatever. They go to the places that's basically Europeanized so that you can continue to live the way that you used to live in. Because you need because you need your Facebook and you need your marijuana and all the good things <laughs> that America gives you. And don't forget the alcohol. Don't forget that. Yeah. They need that too. Oh, they don't get that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they're going to get that. See, mm. you can't live without that because you're a dark European. You're a European. You're, you're a chocolate-covered uh, cookie. <laughs> Even if you black power. Even if you black power, you, you black power cookie. You're not white. I'm an African. What kind of African? They want to be all the Africans on the, on the continent. Be specific. Are you Somali? Are you a Twa? You know, are you Congolese? What the hell are you? And you you don't have no relative over there at all, not one. I'm an African. When these people talk about I'm a Chinese, no relatives. Uh, most of the time they have a relative in China or or, or Asia, wherever they, they come from, they have a relative. You have nobody at all. Hmm. You are African. And if you go over there with no money, you're going to find out exactly how friendly they are. They ain't that friendly as you think. Nope. You go over there don't have no money. And this is another thing about that. We have biological people, family, in this country 
that you don't get along. You don't like your mama, you don't like your daddy, you don't like your cousins. But you think you're going to go to Africa and, and that's my family. They all true. Those are the people too. So they didn't get to know your happy ass. They ain't going to like you either. Oh. They don't like you in America. They ain't going to like you in Africa either. <laughs> Only in America. Only in Africa. Now, the thing about Africa, you mess around and probably get murdered. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they, go missing up in that piece. You go missing up in there. You got to um, have some damn money before you go over there. I saw a video this morning, and YouTube took it down real quick. It was a video about some soldiers or some people in Cameroon. There was two sisters and there are three children or something like that. They took them to a bitch and shot them outright. That's what's waiting on your ass in Africa. Man. YouTube took down the video. Wow. I know they do. Holy and righteous. They got a lot of problems over there. Mm -mm. What sense do it make for me to go from this garbage dump to the other? <laughs> they don't even want to be there. Yeah, they don't even want to be there. They can get some food stamp, beer, wine, and weed with us. <laughs> <laughs> and another thing, they want white Jesus. Oh, yeah. yeah. They can't live without him. They, yeah, they want that white Jesus. Jesus. They want white Jesus. They argued me down on my uh, messenger talking about they're going to pray for me. I said, I wish your ancestors could hear you. <laughs> yeah, they want white Jesus. Yeah, they, they want white Jesus. They go white Jesus right there. Yeah. At all. That's what they want. And it, just, it kills me. Actually going to argue with me and talk about Jesus is white. And you want me to pack my bags and go over there? I can have that right here. I'm not interested in Jesus being white in America. Or Africa. We're, not all. We're not interested in Jesus being black. We're not yeah. interested in Jesus being Asian. We ain't interested in Jesus being Jew. We ain't interested in him being African. None of that. Because you know there's a Jesus in every culture. Y'all do know that, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. There's an Asian Jesus. Yeah. There's an Indian yeah. Jesus. <laughs> there's an Asian Jesus. There's an Indian Jesus. Uh, there is. That looks different. Yeah. Yeah. But Jesus never existed historically, period. The mm. Jesus of the four Gospels never even walked the earth, never existed. Mm. You know, so it's all Jesus is a myth. That's what Jesus is. He, he's a straight fictional person. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you know, if I try to have this argument with a Christian, honey, they'll tell me in a minute, you're going to hell for denying Jesus. I try to have this. <laughs> she is. If I try to have the same argument with Pastor. As sweet as she is, she'll argue me down. Now, now, la la, you know, you know now, you know the truth. She'll tell you, she'll tell me in a minute. Now, now, la la, you know the truth. You know the truth now. Come on now. But they reject Jesus themselves. In their own Bible, it says that they're not supposed to eat shellfish of the sea. They still eat crab legs and lobster and shrimp. They oh, don't see, they, they deny the Old Testament now. They deny the laws of the Old Testament. They, they deny all of that. Everything. They rationalize everything. Yeah. But it, to me, you know, to me, that's just another lame excuse to not cooperate and not be obedient. So, I mean, if it's in there and it's saying that you should not supposed to do it, whether it's Old Testament or New Testament, it makes no difference to me. But see, they'll tell you in a minute, the Christians will tell you in a minute that we don't live according to the law of Moses. They'll tell, they'll tell you in a minute, we're we we not in the law of Moses. Yeah. That's what they say. Because they don't follow directions and they hard headed. And that's why I can't be a part of people that can't cooperate. You might as well be a free thinker like me since you don't want to follow directions. I don't want to follow directions, but it's not even just I don't want to follow directions. I don't want to follow hypocrites' directions. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I live a moral, moral, ethical life than a lot of 
people that go to church every Sunday. Yeah. Sister Noble, I don't know you from a can of paint, but if I saw you drop your wallet, I'm going to return that wallet to you because I have principles that I live by. Period. Exactly. I live by principles every day. I'm like you. And I don't need a pastor, especially one that's having a damn affair, <laughs> to tell me how to live a moral, ethical life. You know, which that makes no sense to me either. And then furthermore, I, I can't seem to find anyone that's not either a pervert or alcoholic. And don't mind you, I'm not going to tell you that I don't drink. I don't live this perfect life. I do drink. I do drink and I occasionally smoke weed. I'm not, I'm far from perfect. However, it's a personal choice. And as long as I'm responsible with my consumption, I don't see no problem with it. However, there's preachers that come to church high and they still trying to tell you how to live your life. They still picking up prostitutes and still living a secular life according to their own Bible. They can't even conform to their own Bible. So how you think you finna indoctrinate me when you can't follow directions? Right. Now, there's one principle. I used to go to a lot of little AA meetings, and they used to say, um, you can't transmit something you haven't got. And I'm a firm believer in that. You can't, just like you can't turn a hoe into a housewife, a single person can't tell somebody how to maintain a marriage. I also believe that to be with a uh, Christian. You can't tell somebody how to live a morally ethical life when you can't even do that yourself. You're still practicing idolatry when you put up your Christmas tree, when you put up your Easter basket, when you when you when you celebrate these pagan astrological pagan mm -hmm. holiday Easter. That's what Christianity Christmas. is, paganism. <laughs> it's all paganism. And because of that, how can you tell me I'm going to hell because I drink beer or I'm exactly. going to hell because exactly. I don't drink But you're practicing astronomy, idolatry, you're practicing everything that paganism against your Bible. Because Judaism and, and, it, and Christianity and Islam is paganism. Absolutely. That's all it is. It's paganism. It's, yeah. it's, it's idolatry. Your cross you're yeah. wearing on your face is idolatry. You can't follow directions. I got two hard-headed kids. I don't want to be a part in a building with a whole building full of hard-headed people. Yes. Eating, selfie, and I'm not going to stop eating crab legs, so ain't no need of me lying. I'm yeah. not going to stop eating. That's just my personal choice. Oh, I'm going to eat some crabs now. I'm going to eat, well, eat some crab legs every thing now and then. I am going to eat some crab legs every once in a while, and I'm going to eat some shrimps. Now, I'm, I'm going to do that. That's what Christians say, too, but the Bible tells them they're not supposed to do it. Now, right. mind you, as much as I love crab, <laughs> if I ever find it to be Christianity is true, I will not touch it no more. If I ever find out that it was any truth to any of that, I like to follow directions. I know that I'm not supposed to jaywalk. I, I cross at the, the crosswalk. I do not jaywalk, period. I'm 42 years old, never had a jaywalking ticket a day in my life because I follow directions. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to things like that, I'm going to follow directions. That I would have to be a part of a church that wasn't practicing paganism, which is hard to find. Even the Puritans abolished Christianity twice because of the paganism. Mm -hmm. They they abolished it because of the the roots of idolatry. You know, with the East Star, East Star, Hallows Eve. Hallows mm -hmm. Eve, we all know that that's a demonic holiday. You feel me? And they still practice it because mm -hmm. of the sake of tradition and because it's a money maker. Right. Regardless yeah. of how much money it generates, right is right and wrong is wrong. And so to me, I, I find Christians to be very hypocritical because yeah. you're going to do what's wrong just because the, ma the majority... 
the majority doesn't always shouldn't necessarily rule and the majority should not necessarily be followed mm -hmm. i'm with the minority i'm right with the minority if i'm wrong then i'm gonna accept that but i just refuse to believe that everybody all the countries in this world have to accept jesus to go to heaven it's people in other countries never heard of jesus right. never ever ever heard of jesus so why would they go to hell because they're not christian that's very unreasonable of god to tell you sister noble you have to be christian you could have been born on a, de a deserted island and never heard of jesus why should you go to hell because you never worshiped him that's unrealistic let's see, let's see first of all hell is an invention okay okay according to according to the hell according to the bible that was invented it's not even a real place and i'm right, talking about the hell, according place. to the new testament i'm talking about the one in the new testament in in the book of luke uh i believe in the book of luke chapter 16 that's not even a real place first of all in the old testament they never even described any place such as what you read in the New Testament called hell. They they never described hell like that. They 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 described they described uh you know a place where the dead went, but it wasn't like the hell that you read in the New Testament from the book of Luke chapter 16. Fire it was um from. yeah yeah see you know they embellished they <laughs> embellished that place you know what I mean to to instill wow. fear in the heart of the believers okay that that's what they did they embellished that place to instill fear in the heart of the believers okay it's, it's not even a real place so don't don't worry yourself about you going to hell after you die because you didn't serve jesus honey it's not real and read and read my book when you get a chance actually you you can go online and purchase it on um, amazon kindle for 3.99 oh, yeah, yeah 3.99 when on i get my amazon, go on amazon Okay. Go on Amazon, type it in, um, Talik, go on Amazon.com, type in my title, God is on trial. I spent... You can purchase it, you can purchase it on Kindle for $3.99. What? Oh, mm -hmm. I'm going to order, I'm going to order as many as I can for the people yeah. that, you know, that have an open mind. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, yeah, but to be on... Go on Amazon.com and type in, um, God is on trial and... You said God is on trial? Okay. Oh, that's okay. what it's called. Yeah, it's on Amazon Kindle for $3.99. And you and mind the if I share The that paperback is $13.99. So what? You mind if I share um, the link on my social media and also uh, my Instagram? I don't mind. Okay. I don't mind. You can, uh, you can, um, you can also go on my Facebook and you can share the um, book cover, you know, just to let people okay. see the book. The book cover. You can go on my Amazon. Yeah, go on. Not oh. Amazon. Yeah, it's on Amazon. It's on Amazon. Right. Yeah, you can share the book that's cover. A very taboo. It takes. It takes. It takes courage to put that out there. And to mm -hmm. be honest with you, you and Talik is a breath of fresh air due to the mm -hmm. fact that God been on trial since I was five. Yeah. Yeah. Like, where are you? Exactly. Where are you? Where are you? Not only that, but I wish you be more specific with your choice of religious set because you got these Christians making it seem like you you Christian. Then you got these Jehovah Witnesses making it seem like you Jehovah Witness. These just all these different. You got the Catholics making it seem like you're Catholic. Can't nobody show me no evidence of God picking any of those uh -uh. to be the set you know so it's just like yeah, i decided god is not in religion god is right. not in religion period right so i'm agnostic yeah. i'm agnostic i'm agnostic I like also. right i'm, I'm agnostic. agnostic i know that there has to be a power greater than myself but yeah. he's definitely not Christian because that's a weak ass punk ass. God person. is not in religion, period. There it is, there. Period. God is not in religion, period. There it is, there. Yeah, yeah. 
So, you know, I, I'm, I'm agnostic. I tell people I'm not an atheist. I am not an atheist. Read my right. book <laughs> and you will see where I'm talking. You'll see where I'm coming from, you know. Right. Understandable. So, yeah, yeah. We're both, we have a we have a lot more in common than what I thought we would have had. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I grew up in a religion like you. I grew up in organized religion all my life. You know, I wow. uh, got a family full of Christians and they don't, a lot of them don't act like Christians, but you know, you know, they, they claim they're Christian, but they don't act like Christians. And what? you know, but my mom, now my mom on the other hand, my mama was really a real person. She was real. She was real, my mama. I can say that about my mama. She was real. And I can also say that about the pastor. She was real. You know, so, yeah, those two women, they were definitely true Christians for real. My mom and the pastor. What is your okay. view? I have a question for you. What is your views on the law of attraction? The law of attraction. I, I think that a lot of times the choices that we make, uh -huh. the choices that we make tend to be toward what we are most familiar with. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. The choices that we make tend to be toward what we're most familiar with. Like, you know, if we grew up in a house, like, for instance, if I grew up in a household with a good father, a loving father, mm -hmm. I think eight times out of ten, I would attract a loving man in my life. If I right. grew up in a household with a loving father who loved on me and cared about me, eight times out of ten, I will say that I will probably attract a loving man in my life. Right. But I never grew up in a household with a father. I never, because my daddy died um, when I was six years old. Mm. And he wasn't there in the household with us before he died. So, you know, I think the law of attraction, I, I think there is some, there is some truth to it, but I would not put 100% faith in it. Does that make sense? Right, there is right. some truth in it, but I would not put 100% faith in it because you still right. got to make, you still have a choice. You have to make decisions. Right, and absolutely. Some of the choices that we make are just poor decisions based upon, I say, earlier experiences that we had, okay? Right. I agree with you. Our life experiences from an early age now, okay? Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. So, you know, I, I think we we could make better choices if we were more informed. You know what I mean? If we were more informed, we could make better choices. But sometimes our choices, our choices is based on what we've been taught and what we've been exposed to from an early I, age. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Talik, what's your views on uh, the law of att attraction and the 12 universal laws? I don't think he can hear you. I don't think he can hear you. Okay. I'm having I'm having a difficulties. I don't know you're going in and out on my side. I don't seem like you. Both can, you can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, what is your what is your views on uh the law of attraction, there's, you know, I mean, I just want to know what's your opinion on the law of attraction and the, and the 12 universal law principles. I ain't heard about the 12 universal law principles. What's that? Oh, yeah, look, you got to look the that up for yourself. Yeah. You've been hanging yeah. around with old black folks, ain't you? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, this is just like, it's not like laws like, like yeah. like the Ten Commandments type, but it's just like, uh, it's just like self improve, self positive affirmations to make you like a better person or like you know stuff for you. I mean, a lot of it is basic common sense. Like you so you mean like like the laws of Maya? No, no, no. This, this, this is not, not this is not the laws of Maya. This is not the laws of Maya. This yeah. is the 12 universal laws. 
But um, a lot of them are like, they're all deemed towards yourself and how to be with yourself. Because that's like how I am. By me being a free thinking person, I'm all about into, uh, it could make you sound kind of narcissistic, but it's like I'm always focused on myself, self-centered. Like, you know, I'm constantly concerned with how I thought, how I perceive things. Like, if you, one of the principal laws is, if you can change your mind, you can change your life. So looking at how you perceive things and, you know, just different things like that. It's not like nothing. It's not nobody's rule. Nobody's rules. It's like it's like personal development. You got to look it up for yourself. But because um, I haven't been in that book, but I was reading uh, a book in 2007 about the uh the universal laws. It was called um, what was the name of it? I can't think. Of it. I know it was the laws of attraction, and I watched the documentary on it. But it was so many years ago. But I know one of the principles is like you could change your mind, you could change your life. It was all like positive stuff. But those to, those principles held more merit in my life than the Ten Commandments because I think I broke all of those. And I plead the fifth, so don't ask me no questions. But I broke all the Ten Commandments. <laughs> and um, I don't know. I, I wasn't able to live by none of those. None of those. None of the Ten Commandments. But those 12 universal principles, I've been able to live by a lot of them. And they're just basic common sense, being honest, you know, having integrity, you know, uh, being good to yourself. You know, getting rest. You know, it's good stuff. It's not nothing. It's not nobody rules. There's no guru to follow. There's no guru at all. I don't follow directions enough for a guru, period. But I found some truth in a lot of a lot of things, but not enough to uh convert i'm not into being converted into anything if i gotta convert i'm not interested i want to be a free thinking woman for the rest of my life yeah but I, I, I tell you anything that helps us even in christianity or in religion there's there's benefit in a lot of these different things we just have to discern uh what is good and keep the good and throw away the trash and that's what I do because no matter I was raised in in and I'm that's gonna always be a part of me. But I know what part that I can use and I know what part I can throw away. Right. There's nothing I wish I was one of these people that never was influenced and born, you know, never was around religious teaching. But that's that's not yeah. the case. So I understand what I can take that's good, I can use, keep mm -hmm. it. And throw the stuff that I know is no good that I can throw that away. So it, it don't make no difference what it is, you know. Whatever information that we get, we can find some type of good in it. But a lot of us, we just take it all, and all of it is not good for us, you know. Living in delusions and fairy tales is messing us up. Uh, <laughs> black folks are the most spookiest. I mean, the most scariest, spookiest folks. I mean, they, I mean, they just think. Anything delusional, very anything that you can think of that's unnatural, supernatural, they believe in any kind of crazy kind of thinking, you know. They just believe they believe in strong too. I'm like, you're not gonna get nowhere. And that something is gonna come and save them. They don't have to do nothing. I just stay good and and a spaceship gonna come out the sky and change the world. And the mothership. Men, men are the one that done this. Men can change the whole thing around because this is man-made. This is not nothing supernatural. This is not nothing natural. This is man-made. Man messed all this up. So men can turn around and fix it if they want to. But you got a certain, you got certain people that's in control, that's corrupt. They like it just the way it is. They need to be yeah. taken out. It's simple as that. And I don't know why we haven't gotten to the point where the, especially the poor, you don't have nothing else to lose. We outnumber them a hundred billion to one. 
You need to take these suckers out. These they losing their lives out here in LA. Huh? They losing their lives out here in California. Watch the news. Uh -huh. And we started with the we started with the police, you know, and um I'm starting to see that more and more. Which it was like that 20 years ago. The police, no government agency was allowed to come into our project yeah. detaining nobody's children. And I'm serious. If you came with a badge on, people would instantly start shooting at you. Mm -hmm. DCFS would not make it out of the projects with anybody kid. The police, you would literally have to be near death before the police will show up in the project. And we need to bring that back. Bloods and Crips, they coming back together because Bloods and Crips originally was a positive thing in California. And I'm glad that we're getting back on that page where we're loving one another. And, you know, it's really us against the police. And, you know, it's an eye for an eye. And it seemed like that's the only way, you know, we're going to be understood is we got to bust back. You can march all day long, Sister Noble, but until I make you feel where I'm coming from, you're going to keep doing me. So this is why I'm starting to see this more and more and more in California. Police officers, they're getting shot. They're getting attacked. They're getting beat up. They're getting dogged out right now. It's hands down. There is green light on them. They scared <laughs> to come around, especially at night in certain hoods, because they know a lot of people is out here playing for keeps. People is getting their ammunition ready for this race war. So this is about to go down. It really is. It's about to go down. And it should have been this a long time ago. It wouldn't have been as many deaths as it's been if it would have been an eye for an eye a long time ago. I think that's the only principle in the Bible I agree with is the eye for an eye. <laughs> I don't know if y'all can still hear me, but I mean what I say when I say an eye for an eye. Yeah. Yeah, in California, it's going down. In Los, I'm in Los Angeles, California. So it's going down. Police is not, matter of fact, they're not even coming out unless it's really absolutely necessary because <laughs> they getting gunned down. They getting a taste of their own medicine. Can y'all hear me? Yes, yes. They getting a taste of their own medicine and I'm happy about it. I'm, I'm happy about it. It's about time that they feel what other people is feeling. So yeah, y'all want to y'all you know they get they they lose enough they lose enough members on a force, they'll think twice. That's always a game changer, making somebody feel what you have to feel. So yeah, I'm a firm believer in that. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm not gonna hold you guys up. I appreciate y'all yeah, having me. Yeah, um, I just want to say, sister, I'm glad to see a person like this. <laughs> it's wonderful. Um, Thank you. you still get together, you know, finally, finally made it this far, and I want to hopefully that you come back and and and, and be with us. Oh, absolutely. Um, uh, you guys can add me. You know, anytime. Um, normally, you know, just give me a heads up so I can try to have the kids together. Yeah. I'll have the meals already prepared and um, have my kids already settled and everything. And I love to join you. Anything positive and really uh, anything knowledgeable, I want to be a part of. But Sister Noble, once again, um, please send me that link. You know, I'm Tangy Cox on Facebook. Send me the link to your book. And uh -huh. um, it's a lot of free thinkers that's on my page. I'm going to forward that information. And after okay. I get the book myself, I'm going to start putting it out there. Okay. I'm going to send it to you. Okay. 
I'm gonna send you a link. Yeah, right you're you're now. you're in Atlanta. Yes. I got some homies in Atlanta. I'm gonna tell my homies to order that book too. All right. Yep. I got some homies from my hood that's in Atlanta. Where are you located at, Talit? I'm in the St. Louis area. Oh, you are you I'm far from there? Yeah. Oh. Uh, so we got St. Louis, Missouri. We got Atlanta, Georgia. And we got what? Los Angeles, California. That's correct. We in the house. That's amazing what technology. Is. And also, I'm we got to think. We got all friends on Facebook. Yeah, we casting also on Facebook, and we're here. And no, we got, I'm talking about uh, talking about me and Tangent Cox. Oh. Oh yeah, Josiah, you want to say hi? Hi. Hey, how you doing, that little brother? Hey. <laughs> hey, what's up? I'm doing. I'm going to send you. A, I'm going to send you a friend Don't request, see. Tangent. Okay, I'll accept it. Tell me. Yeah. Get well. Okay, I just sent it. I hope you get well soon. Okay. Yeah, I'll make sure I uh hit that. Yeah, I confirmed it. Okay. Yeah. You wasn't you wasn't Facebook friends with Tangy yet? So, uh, no. No. Oh, you wasn't? Yeah, go ahead and tag it. Okay, yeah. I will. I gotta um Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, I got you. And I'll make sure that I um share it with my friends. And uh wow. Yeah, and there's a lot of a lot of my friends on social media. I've been having to cuss out left and right over my own personal religious beliefs. I've been telling them, get your ass off my page because um, you already know this is a non Christian state right here. <laughs> yeah, we uh, fuck, we have it out, we have it out all the time over my beliefs. Jesus ain't never done nothing for them, but they want to argue with me over Jesus. But we, right. we want to best wishes, um, to Lee, you know, and um. Please stay in touch with us and let me know once I um I get my stimulus. I should be getting my stimulus like in another couple weeks, but because I did mine manually, I don't do cash app, but I want to send a donation uh -huh. through MoneyGram. I do things the old fashioned way. I'm gonna send mine through MoneyGram. Okay. So also make that an option, not just cash apping, because cash app I found it to be. Wow. Uh man, they they got me. They robbed me for eighty dollars, uh -huh. so I ain't doing no more cash out. But I will wire. I will Western Union my money. I want Western okay. Union you a donation though. Okay. Yeah, Just that's not. A let me know where you wired it. I believe it. I go get it. <laughs> yeah, I live actually like three blocks from one, so I'll be sending a donation soon. Yeah, I'll send in a donation. You just have to send me. You have to send me the correct spelling of your name yeah. and your city. That's why I asked what city you're in because you have to have that information when you send in uh, money. Yeah. Well, that won't be no problem. I miss, you know, I, I, I give it to you in the text, or whatever. Yeah, do that. We, you know, because you it's a lot of stalkers on here. So, yeah, you know. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm shocked that one of my stalkers didn't show up. I guess I hope that he get the message. I'm not playing no game with him. So I, I would advise you take 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 my advice. Mess with me like that. I said, leave right. me alone. All about depending because it's gonna turn uh -huh. into something that you never thought. Because I'm not the one to play. <laughs> I'm like a pit bull. A, a pit bull. Once I grab on you, it's on and popping. You got to go down. I stop it till you go down. They gotta call them. They gotta call the law, huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey. So, you know, I thank my sister Tangy. She's our special guest for general discussion tonight. Uh, brother, brother Talib was trying to call in a little bit on the too late side. Uh, so uh, I could, I could, I could call him and just so he that he could say hi. But you know, the show is basically over. So I mean, yeah. But uh.
Talia wanted to come in, but he's a little too late. We, we shut him down. Thank you, Sister Noble, for, for your presence. And, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm in heaven. I'm, around, I'm with the women, you know. Very knowledgeable. Very yeah, knowledgeable. Very knowledgeable. And, and you know, I'm with the with the women tonight. I'd rather be by myself with the women. I didn't want to share nobody with no Eric anyway, no Talib. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got women on the wall. I got women. I'm surrounded by womanhood. These guys, come on, I got shit in my face. And when you go look at that video, you know, well, you know, really, yeah. And then when I talk on my video, I'm always and I have always been pro woman, always. I'm Sister Noble, kid. you got a YouTube channel too? You uh, have a YouTube yes, channel? Yes, I do. Okay, yeah, That's I'm gonna have to look you up on YouTube. Okay. Um, uh, just um, hold on for a minute. It's on your Facebook? Uh, no, I can send it to you. Yeah, send it to me because I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and subscribe. That way I can watch I can watch uh, videos. Yeah. Cause I know she about to break it down from a whole different perspective. Hearing it from a woman's perspective, I know it's gonna be a different experience too. Wow. You know, we you know when one one day when y'all do invite me back, I want uh you guys to touch on how black folks are too overly religious. <laughs> they too superstitious and too overly religious. <laughs> I'm trying to send this um, link. You know, Talik even rides my one of my favorite YouTubers. Uh, you say he's one of your favorite YouTubers? Absolutely, 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 absolutely. My kids and everything know they gotta be quiet when I'm watching him. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, they'd be like, "Mama, you love that." I said, "I love his knowledge. I love his, I love his knowledge." You know, you don't find too many awakened black men like that. You just don't, man. They're, man, they'll argue you down harder than anybody. Okay, I, I got it. I got, got it. it. Okay, I got okay. It. I got it. So I will be subscribing as well. I'll start tuning in, and um. Checking you out on YouTube. Checking y'all on YouTube. And then y'all got a closed group too on yeah. Facebook. I saw. Yeah. You, you, because there's yeah. so many overly religious people on my page. It's ridiculous. They know I don't care anyway. They're gonna I, um, be there because guess what? They trying to save your soul. So they're gonna they gonna be there because they all want to save your soul instead of saving themselves. They can't save that's their problem right there. They so can't say also when they sleeping with somebody else's husband. Exactly. But see, they wanna they wanna let you know that you know Jesus is real. So that's why they're gonna stay on your page because they wanna Yeah, we're getting ready to close out. Uh brother, brother Talib is, is, is on the speakerphone. He just wanted to say give everybody the greeting. Well, go ahead, go ahead. We listening. All right, uh... I just want to send, send out uh, the greetings to the family, you know, on this platform, you know. I'm in a sabbatical, as everybody know, but uh, I ain't went nowhere because I'm always going to be with this platform. Like I always say, y'all keep it the realest of any other platform I know about on YouTube. <laughs> you know, so hey, uh, I just got to keep it uh, one thousand. You know, and uh, yeah. I may have to get on this live hang out with y'all tonight. But you know, I'm tired of with the school thing, working to get my dog, uh, GED diploma. You know, and I'm dealing with 
you know, dealing with the struggles and the situation to come with that. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm kind of tired up. That's why I couldn't get on the video with y'all. And had I known y'all was on a live hangout, just not been called Brother Tommy and got on there with y'all, you know? Yeah. Wait, how, so how you doing, Sister Mo? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Oh, okay. I'm doing good. I'm, okay. I'm you know, I, um, I'm trying to yeah. get like, this, trying to, trying to. Still blocking them, them, still blocking them pokaters out. Huh? <laughs> uh, yes. I'm still, I'm trying to get this book sold and stuff, but I'm, you know, other than that, I'm trying to sell these books. But other than that, I mean, you know my book. Yeah, yeah, and, and Brother Tali. Yeah, man. Are you watching? Are you watching? Are you watching the live stream? Yeah, I was watching the live stream. As soon as I popped over and seen the, the live stream pop up on my phone, I said, let me go to this. Matter of fact, I said, let me call Tali to see if you can bring me in. Yeah, you know, I got. Show to get on. Yeah, I got the, uh, my, uh, my other sister on here, Sister Tangy. Okay, yeah, uh, how you doing, sister? I never uh, met you. Yeah. Uh, yes. Hey, how you doing, brother? You all right? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm doing all right. Everybody is, you know, y'all are just keeping this thing in the world water, just staying strong, you know? And it's so uh, a in the beach, you know? Right, keep up the right. good work with, with the knowledge. Hey, all right, hey, he was talking about you. You, you, you in the... Uh, California, right? I heard, and uh, I know Sister Noble in Atlanta. I know Brother Talik in Illinois. But see, I'm right smack in the middle of this bug. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, we cut right in between. <laughs> right. Yeah, this, this is a whole other different entire situation. But uh, anyway, uh, you yeah, just, uh, man. I'm just glad just to be back on here with the brothers, just, 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 you know? Yeah. I, you know, right. in the way I had this weekend, and I see it's a lot respectable. You know, you ain't got nobody cussing, you ain't got right. nobody talking over nobody, right. disrespecting nobody, and all that other crazy issues, you know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't got time for that. I don't either. That's why, that's why I left that social media stuff alone in the first place. For real, you know, I mean, people is just too disrespectful, you know. Yes, they are. People don't, people don't know how to talk to people, right? You know, yeah, that and all that other extracurricular stuff they be saying out their mouth is unnecessary. Just get to your right. point and move on, and let somebody else they, they got to say. Absolutely, you know. Yeah, but uh, other than that, uh, I just that's all I just want to say, family, because I know y'all about to clock out. Yes. I wish it was like you like nice meeting you. Take care. From the beginning. It was nice meeting you. Take care. Y'all have a beautiful night. You too. You too. It was nice talking to you tonight. I got technical difficulties. Yeah, my difficulties on my on my end, but. Uh, okay. Yeah, because I hear y'all going in and out. Yeah, she. Uh, the sister was telling us. To, to take care, you know, she's out of here. Matter of fact, she's oh, okay. gone. You know, oh, okay. I started not to call you because I wanted to be here every minute all along with these women by myself. I'm starting to call oh, you at all. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Ain't, ain't no same-sex alternative lovers on this. You I know? know? I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is what it is, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and to those of us, and to those who have accused uh, this platform of being that way, you know, that that's uh, also a shout-out to them too as well, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Because I really, boy, I wish I, I could have called.
I'll talk more thoroughly in the news. Well, my next, my next uh, topic that I want to deal with, uh, I got another sister on her way. She wants to talk, and she's excited about uh, the Mississippi campaign. That's why she had called me. She said, what is this Mississippi campaign thing about? And she called me, and she said uh, she said she won't be available to the next week. And I want to talk about the, the benefits of Mississippi campaign, but I'm going to hold back on that on that subject until she can get on board. So uh, that'll probably be sometime next week. But uh, I don't know it's going to how I feel, how everybody feels. We can always, you know, if you, feel, if you feel like you want to talk about something, just to know, but we can all just get together, you know, whatever. It don't, you know, it don't make yeah. any difference. Yeah. It's according to how I feel because you know I'm having medical things here going on. Too, so. Yeah, yeah. You know, but, uh, That's fine by me. Then whenever you're ready. Okay. What was the topic of the news video tonight? General discussion. General discussion. Intra okay. Introducing, basically introducing our sister, you know, Tangi to to the audience. She's gonna. Oh, okay. And she's she's gonna be back. You know, uh, I quickly got somebody replaced. You know, got rid of one, replaced somebody. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Somebody better had to get it. Had to get had to get Aquan out of the picture. Yeah. And all that negative energy coming from him. Yeah. yeah, she stepped on. Well, she's been around for a long. You know, I think I've known her for, for since 2013. I think somewhere. Okay. okay. You know, but she she decided she want to come on and come on board and you know support the platform and do whatever she can to, to help. You know. Okay. Yeah. And her and her son is like 10, 11. You know, he's been my YouTube friend for a long time too. I talk to him a lot of times. You know, her son, uh, Jose. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so All right. Been around a little while. You know, it's, just, it's a lot of folks out there. You know, that listen to us more than the views. You know, present. The views, right? Right. Yeah, can't can't you really can't go back? Why do you think these folks get mad at me? They know somebody. These people gotta be listening to me. Because if nobody right. listens to me, what the hell are you gonna? What the hell do you care about what Angel Snell number seven said? Exactly. I might not be getting thousands, thousands, thousands of people, but I'm getting enough to get your attention. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. And that's that's all that's required. Exactly. That's all that's required. So on that note, I want to thank uh Brother Talib for, for coming and coming in and, and uh greeting us towards the end of this broadcast. I want to thank uh, Sister Tangi and, and her son for joining us, Sister Noble. And also, um, before we get out of here, if you have not done it yet, I would like for you to support my uh, medical hospital fund if you can. Uh, the link is in the chat room in the description box. Sister Noble's book, God is on Trial. And uh, it's, on, it's on Kindle now. It's on Kindle for $3.99. For $3.99? Oh, now, see, you can't beat that. Can't beat that. $3.99, four bucks. Can't beat that. Kindle for Amazon.com and, and you can download the book for three dollars and ninety nine cents. Okay. Okay. On your phone. You can read it from your phone. All right. Also I downloaded it. I downloaded it on my phone. It's on my phone. Oh, did you? I love it. Yes. I'm gonna go ahead and do that because my brother I got love it. it. My brother got my paperback, so I'll download yeah. it on my phone. Yeah. Yeah. And also, also the paperback yeah. is thirteen dollars and ninety nine cent. If you're old fashioned and just want to read the paperback book, thirteen dollars and ninety nine cent. Right. Okay. Okay. Those are those are the announcements. Also, mm -hmm. I'm looking forward uh, to Soul Liberation Day, two thousand and twenty one, December the seventh this year. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to pull that one off. Medical issues and everything. I'm not really sure, but the thing. Of Soul Liberation Day 2021 would be an idle mind is a devil's workshop. Right. Let's see if I can put that together. See how we're going to uh, bring that topic together. That's Soul Liberation Day 2021, December the 7th. Uh, we're going to be working to get that, that together. And uh, I'm just appreciate, just like the sister said, I just, I want to be, I'd love to be around like mine. I know I'm not alone. Uh, all you free thinkers, uh, as far as I'm concerned, in the chat room, everybody that's watching, wonderful thing. I'd rather be with seven or ten strong, powerful free thinkers than a hundred thousand zombies. <laughs> so, not into that, you know. Right. Much appreciated. 
Thank you for your donations. Thank you for watching. Thank you for everything that you do. Thank you for your love, care for myself, Sister Noble, Sister Tangy, uh, Brother Talib. This is Angel Snub No. 7. As Dr. Neely is always to stay back and supporting. I wish us love, peace, and so we out. Good yeah. night. Yes, 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 sir. And uh, brother. Yeah.